We got the Lemonator now. Let's bring him in. Uh, Sean, appreciate your continued support of this. By the way, where are you joining us from today, my man? I'm in Orlando, Florida. I'm at home in Orlando, Florida. Okay, well, hey, so many things to go through with that. Is the city buzzing <laughs> with, the, with the NBA coming and the MLS and uh, everybody else? What, what's the city saying? Well, I can't tell you what the city's saying because I've been at home. Uh, you know, I work out at home. I go run in the field in front of my neighborhood. So I haven't had a lot of contact with a lot of guys. Just kind of, you know, being safe about things and going about stuff. So, But is Orlando excited or are they thinking? Because when there was talk of the NHL maybe playing in Saskatoon, Saskatoon was like, well, we don't want to bring this here. So I'm just saying, is there any of that in Orlando? Uh, well, you know, I haven't heard people say anything bad about it. Um, the good thing is that the location that they have, it's an isolated campus, so they won't really have too many uh, contact with, the, you know, if they do it the right way, it's an isolated campus. I do understand both sides of things, and, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, okay to see some sports. I think that kind of sports kind of brings the, the country and the world together, uh, so I think that'll you know, uh, piece a lot of things together as long as they're safe about it and everyone's safe. Thank you, Sean. So with that update, so the, you've seen the CFL has taken voting now for the all-decade team. And by the way, I did vote for you. That's a slam dunk. But the quarterback, friendships aside, who is the all-decade quarterback of the CFL? I'd say uh, Ricky Ray. I would say Ricky Ray is. I'd say Ricky Ray. It's just uh, he's won with, you know, he's from worst to first. He's one with, you know, how the rosters are opposed to the rosters. I would say Bo Levi second. So look at the rosters in uh, in the Toronto Argonauts opposed to the rosters in Calgary. A, consist- a consistent group, a consistent defense. He's uh, Ricky's one with, uh, you know, a lot of different players, a lot of different guys. So I'd say uh, Ricky Ray's the guy for that. I'll tell you what. By the way, Jack Fulton's watching in Vulcan, Alberta. He says, Rod, say hi to Sean. I called him the Eliminate. Eliminator when he was in Calgary. Was Jack the only one that called you that? Uh, no, in high school, the guy for the uh, for the high school sports show, he started calling me that, and I just kind of, you know, I like the Eliminator better, so I just went with that. <laughs> I like Eliminator. Uh, I like them both. But, you know, Ricky Ray could have been for the decade before that, too, by the way, because he won two Grey Cups, too, so whatever. I voted for Bo, and I can't take it back, so whatever. Um Is there any talk amongst you and your guys about this poll, by the way? Because there are some players openly campaigning to vote for them. Have you seen that on social media? Talks, and uh, I just hope that fans look at it as a body of work. Not let's not just look at you know let's not be prisoners of the moment. Like oh, this guy had a great season last year. Let's look at the whole body of work. Let's look at games played. Let's look at the stats, and uh, let's just have fun with it. You know, it's the only football we have right now. I think it's fun to keep everybody talking about football and talking about sports. So, you know, I'm all for it. Yesterday, I cracked a little, a few jokes beforehand. Before uh, then, I started thinking about it. Like, yo, this is the only football we have. So, you know, it's all it's all fun and games. And I'm sorry, my dog Dallas is so spoiled. He wants to get some camera love as well, too. <laughs> <laughs> is your dog's name is Dallas? Yes, it is. What's the origin of that name? Well, I grew up a Dallas Cowboy fan. Uh, Dallas, his birthday's Monday, so he'll be 11 on Monday. So, uh, yeah, he's been, uh, his name's been Dallas since. I grew up a Dallas Cowboy fan my whole life. I'm going to talk to you about the Cowboys in a second then. But just uh, somebody wrote, Colin in Ottawa wrote in and said, who would be your choice, Sean, for the offensive lineman of the decade since you went against them all? Who was the toughest for you to beat? Let's go guard and tackle. Guard and tackle. Guard and tackle. Easily, I would say uh, Stanley Bryant for tackle. Um, you know, the resume speaks for itself. He uh, he comes, uh, he's been a, nothing but a professional. His play has never dropped off. He went to uh, from a, a great cut winning team in 2014 to to Winnipeg in, in 2015. So they went from the worst, one of the worst franchises at the time as far as uh, winning wise. And then now they win a great cup there. So he's won a championship from a team that's already set and been good. And he's won a championship with the team they're rebuilding at to that level. And uh, at guard, I would say. Hmm. Brandon Labatt. I have a lot of respect for his game. He's uh, been he's produced uh, for a number of years in the CFL. Uh, he's battled a lot of injuries, but when he always comes, his play never seems to stop. So uh, I have a lot of respect for his game as well. Those are the two that I voted for. Robbie Emery writes in and says, "Say hi to Sean from Rob Emery from the 2017 Argos. I was known as Little Pistol. Do you remember oh, Little nice. Pistol? There you go." 
There you go. Just said hi. So, uh, so to you, Sean, I know you were you seemed somewhat upset that you didn't have a contract here. It's similar to the Derek Dennis's of the world. There's a lot of guys in your boat. Darrell Mitchell is another. Or Darrell Walker, sorry. I always get the two confused. Are you kind of glad now you didn't? How are you looking at things uh, as a CFL free agent given the climate of the league? Well, I'm excited, man. Um, I hope there is a season this year. Uh, everything happens for a reason. Uh, you know, the cream always rises to the top, so to speak. And uh, with the shortened season, you don't really have that learning curve for rookies to come in and, and, and produce, especially when you got a guy at home, like such as Darrell Walker, uh, Derek Dennis, myself, Odell Willis, and those guys that, you know, proven, and Manny Arsenal as well, proven production. So you don't have that time to learn. If you go with the younger guy, most of the time uh, the learning curve in the CFL is very different. So three to four games, you're already out of playoff contention if you lose those games. So I feel like a lot of us veterans will get phone calls and we will have opportunities. So kind of got to look at the glass half full in situations like this. By the way, Robbie Emery says that he played for the Ottawa Rough Riders in 1991, played end guard, and uh, obviously he's an Argos fan and, and around the club, little pistol. Sorry to interject on that. But I guess, Sean, how much is money a factor? We had an analyst on here yesterday saying CFL players are going to have to decide what's the minimum that you're willing to play for. It's a little different than Major League Baseball, NFL, and so forth. I mean, how much are you guys talking about the money factor? Because it's ruling the major leagues. Um What's what's how big of a factor is it in the CFL? Most of money is always a factor. You look at the the effect that you know it, it's having on us that we're not having sports. So it shows you how much we value sports. So if you value it and you watch it all the time, and, and this is a part of your uh, weekly routine, and you know a lot of people play fantasy sports and they win money to play those fantasy sports. So why not pay the product on the field as well? So. Uh, uh, we need to be valued and uh, taken care of in this opportunity as well because because for the years CFL has always the players have always been on the short chain of things. So if you're gonna have a shortened season for us to take care of our will for that will help take care of a lot of the players' body. But I feel like we should uh, you know finally get compensated the way we should be compensated as players. John in Edmonton wants to know how confident you are that the CFL can survive this pandemic. What are your thoughts on that? I'm very confident CFL has been around for over 100 plus years for a reason. You know, it's a very smart business uh, business move. And, and just because a company or goes to the government and asks for funding in a situation like this necessarily mean that the company is struggling and short on cash. So uh, it's, it's the, the, the time of a lot of big time companies, major corporations have went to the government and received government funding because they're still losing money in this time. But that doesn't mean that they don't have any money. So uh, I think that uh, we can work this out and, and get things solved, resolved. Very positive. Now, you mentioned working from home. What are you uh, doing outside football right now? Glad you asked that. Uh, I did launch an app, a TV streaming app called Lemon TV. I know you guys probably see it on the social media. I've been promo- I did. promoting yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been uh, working with that and uh, just, you know, doing some personal training, training some clients, some one-on-one clients that I've had, like just kids and stuff, just still keeping my social distance from and uh, just, you know, working with pass rush stuff and, and doing some Zoom calls with kids and helping them out with uh, pass rush over Zoom and stuff like that. So that's been going pretty good. But uh, Lemon TV is something that I've just recently launched over 10,000 channels, over 16,000 movies. Um, it's been going pretty good. A lot of uh, clients in Canada love it. A lot of clients in the States love it. We've been open for about three, four weeks now. So if anybody's interested, just uh, reach out to me uh, via social media, and uh, we can get you guys with a trial and try it out. Yeah, Sean is on all social media platforms. It looks really cool, by the way. Way to go, Sean. But I know you're going to be a success no matter what you do. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if you want to touch this, but it's fun, and it's on a Wednesday morning. What the hell? Why not? Nelson says, what was the story behind Lemon's tough time in Saskatchewan? Let me just interject. Do you remember that regular season game, Riders at Argos, when you and Jones were snipping at each other, coming off the sidelines, and our guys are like, this is awesome. Do you, do you want to get into that now, or is enough water gone under the bridge? Always a lot of things. It's, uh, you know, when you come to a situation and uh, you sign with a, a franchise, and, you know, when you talk about things in negotiation, I take those things to heart, and I feel a role I'm going to be playing when I come there because you, as the head coach or the general manager, said that's the role I'm going to be, and that's the only reason I came there. So if I trust you to put my livelihood in a situation where I'm coming to your team, 
fulfill the role that I signed to fulfill and the obligations weren't there. We just didn't see eye to eye. But I have a lot of coach, uh, respect for Coach Jones. He runs a, a great system. He uh, wins everywhere he goes. He single-handedly uh, turned that whole franchise around in Saskatchewan by handpicking the guys, bringing the scheme together. And sometimes, you you know, it's not the player and it's not the coach. You just don't bump heads. You bump heads sometimes and you don't fit the scheme and, and things like that. But uh, things worked out. Uh, for, for me, uh, going to a city, that uh, got traded to a city that I, I grew to love at the time. Uh, I had 14 sacks that season, so it doesn't say it diminished on my end as a player, and it doesn't say it diminished on Coach Jones' end. It just says sometimes players uh, and coaches grow apart from each other in the scheme of senses of things. How many days into camp was it before you realized this isn't going to work? Well, it was like uh, probably like day four. When every time we would go for a pass rush and the D-line would go down to one end and the seven-on-seven seven would go to the other end, I started to realize that I haven't really been doing too much one-on-one -on -one pass rushing. So and I understand, when you set your contracts up in the CFL, you have some incentives in there. So if I have a contract base to be a pass rusher and I'm getting paid to get after the quarterback and I'm dropping in coverage, at the end of the year, it's going to look like my production has dropped because I haven't been getting to the quarterback. Not that you dropped in coverage a certain percentage of time and your numbers have dropped. They only look at those total of numbers. So you got to kind of, you know, protect yourself as the player as well. And I just felt like the earlier the better. If the earlier I can get out of this situation because it doesn't look like I'm going to be fulfilling the role that I thought I was going to fulfill. And, you know, sometimes things work out in business that way. But me and Coach Jones, we have a mutual respect. Uh, actually, we text each other uh, from time and time now again. And uh, just the trash talking on the field, that was just fun. Like, it brings out that he's a fiery guy, and uh, a lot of coaches do stuff like that. Uh, coach Milanovic, he's the same way. Uh, um, who's the coach in uh, Edmonton last year? Head coach at Edmonton. Maz. He's the same way as well. Maz. Yeah. yeah, he's a lot of like that. So, you know, it's it's fun, man. It, it keeps the – it's no disrespect. There's no – you know, it's just – it's part of the game. Uh, yeah, and as you said, uh, it's, it worked out for both. Jones is sitting in the NFL right now. Uh, you've won Grey Cup since. It's worked out for both. Hey, last question. Next time you come on, we'll spend more time on the Cowboys because it's looking like there will be a season. How do you feel about the fact that Dak, Zeke, and Amari Cooper are referred to as the triplets? Because I'm a Cowboys fan, Sean, myself. And I'm like, they're not the triplets until they do something. Like the last triplets. Or do you feel they should be called the triple? How do you feel about that crew in Dallas with that nickname? I just feel like a lot of us as society, we like to relive the past. If we get one little skimp of, oh, man, they remind me of this group. Now, you know, I'm not going to crown them the triplets until you got at least one playoff game. <laughs> so, uh, exactly. very passionate. Boys, I, I, uh, like I said, my dog's name is Dallas. So, uh, <laughs> You know, I, I mean, I feel like they have the roster to do it. It's just, you know, you got to come together. I feel like they got a pretty good head coach who can uh, take Dak's game to the next level if we can get him to show up to camp or if, <laughs> if he shows up this season. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. And um, the running game has been there. They have the personnel to do it. It's just after a while, potential only lasts so much. And now it's time to put up. It's time to, you know, go out here and do what you're, you know, being paid to do. There's a lot of Cowboys fans out there. There's a lot of Cowboys fans watching. And, I mean, last year, everybody was saying this is the most talented Cowboys team since the 95 Cowboys. And they didn't make the playoffs. And Jason Garrett lost his job. And it's like, guys, you, we can't. The coach lost his job. <laughs> and, yeah, you got Mike McCarthy in there. It's on the players this year. That's all that I'm saying. So, Garrett got blamed. You're not going to blame Mike McCarthy if it doesn't work this year. Lemonator, thank you. Anything else uh, before we let you roll? Yes, I want to give a special shout-out to the uh, CFLPA. They've been doing an amazing job, and I want to give a shout-out to Solomon Elementi, and he's been doing a good job communicating weekly with the players and letting us know steps, whether it's good news, bad news, or no news. Uh, all communication is well, and you're in a sensitive situation like we're in right now, and I definitely want to give those guys a, a congratulations and a shout-out for, you know, just keep up the good work, and we know you're working hard for us. And, uh, we greatly appreciate everything you guys are doing because you guys have been, you know, putting in the hours to make sure things are right for us. So greatly appreciate that, guys. Nice uh, positivity and a great way to end the chat. Sean, thanks. Stay safe and uh, hope to see you out in the field soon. No problem. Thank you. Sean Lemon you. from Orlando, Florida, checking in this morning. 
You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.